So we're going to be talking about common iron effect in this video. This is the topic that leads us into talking about buffers and titrations, which will be a future video. So we well, have to ask the question, what are common ions and how do common ions affect equilibrium? So first thing is we have to understand what a common ion is. So a common ion is an ion that is placed in solution where there already is an equilibrium that's taken place. So common ions are going to affect the equilibrium by placing the stress. And this goes back to Le Chatelier's principle. And so if we look at this example here where we take acetic acid, acetic acid has an equilibrium. It's a weak acid, so it produces hydrogen ions and acetate ions. So in this solution, we have a, a, a 0.5 molar acetic acid solution. And the basic question we're going to ask, what's the pH of this solution? So we set up the ice chart and we write out the equilibrium expression. You can see in the ice chart here that we have 0.5 molar as your initial concentration for the acetic acid, zero for the hydrogen, and zero for the acetate ion. Now the change here is going to be minus x for the acetic acid because, well, there's no hydrogen or acetate ions present. So what they will do is they will increase in their concentration. So and this here should be plus x, and you see the plus x there. Now, the equilibrium is going to be 0.5 minus x for the acetic acid, and then hydrogen ion is going to be x, and then acetate also will be x. So we're going to use this information, and we're going to work with the equilibrium expression for acetic acid. And you can see the equilibrium expression found right here. So we, we, we input this information into the... the through the expression, you have x times x divided by 0.5. If you notice that 0.5 minus x, this part isn't there. It's because we're going to assume that x is negligible. And so what we will need to do to verify this is use the 5% rule after we calculate x. So we go through the process of solving for x. And you can do this either by just simply plugging it in as you see. If you want to leave the 0.5 minus x in and use a quadratic equation, that's perfectly fine. But to simplify things, we're just going to take the 0.5, we're going to multiply it across to the 1.8 times to negative 5. Then we're going to take the square root of that number, and what we end up with is 0 0.003 molar for x. Now, the 5% rule is where we're going to take... Uh, we're just going to figure out what 0.5% of the initial concentration is. So 5% of the 0.5 molar gives me 0 0.025. Now in order for the 5% rule to be valid, your x that you calculate must be smaller than this 5%. In this case here, x is much smaller than 0 0.025. So we say that is valid. With that being the case, since that's valid, we can say that that is equal to the hydrogen concentration. We plug this in to solve for pH. pH is equal to negative log of 2.5. So that's your initial pH of the solution. And so when we start referring to the, to the common iron effect, now we're going to look at another problem where we're going to add in a salt. So in this next problem here, we're going to add in 0.1 molar sodium acetate into the solution. So what's going to happen to the pH of the solution? So, for, so this kind of goes back to our previous conversation where we look at the salt and we try to figure out what type of salt is it first. That kind of gives an indication as to what's going to happen to the pH of the solution. When we talked about sodium, sodium ions are neutral. And then you have the acetate. And the acetate ions are are basic because they're, they're the conjugate base of acetic acid. The acetic acid being weak makes this a strong conjugate base, so therefore this is going to be basic. So there, what we would see is the pH of the solution should increase after we added this in. Now we go back to the common ion effect and say, okay, so we, we write out the equilibrium. CH3, CO2H, 
yields H plus plus CH3 CO2 minus right at your ice chart all right this is 0 0.5 this is 0 all right this is going to go down by minus x and this is going to be 0.5 minus x plus x and x here's the difference so the difference is is that now this is not going to be 0 this is actually going to be 0 0.1 molar so this is your common ion and I'm just going to abbreviate this, this CI, just so we know that. This is your common ion. So what's going to happen is, is this is going to cause a shift in the equilibrium. And so this is going back to Le Chatelier's principle. So the question is, how much is the pH going to go up based off of this common ion being added into the solution? So we go back through the whole process of writing out the equilibrium expression. So Ka is equal to concentration of hydrogen times concentration of acetic acetate divided by the acetic acid. All right. This is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. We set this equal to now we're going to have x times 0.1 divided by 0.5. We're going to make that same assumption as we did earlier. We'll apply the 5% rule of the initial concentration of acetic acid, just like we did a few minutes back. So now we're going to solve for x. So we're going to take 0 0.5 and multiply it by the 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And then we're going to divide that by 0.1. And we get an x equal to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 5. And so, going back to the 5% rule, earlier, we look at 5% of 0.5, which was 0.025. We calculated that just a minute ago. Is this X smaller than that? Why, yes. I would say that's much smaller. So, we put a check mark. That shows it's valid. And now, we're going to calculate the pH. So, X is equal to the concentration of H+. And so, the pH is equal to negative log of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 5 and that gives me an answer of 4.12 so the initial pH of the solution that we calculated here was was 2.5 now adding in the common ion it raises it to 4.12 and that's because the common ion again was a, a basic salt so you can observe acidic salts as well there's you don't see that often but we're going to do another example in just a, a couple minutes involving ammonia and its conjugate acid so okay so in this example we're going to consider a reaction where 0.1 molar ammonium chloride was added to a 0.8 molar ammonia solution. How might the pH of the solution be affected by the addition of ammonium chloride? So, first thing we do is we need to figure out what the initial pH of the solution is. We, and then we can talk about the common ion effect and how this salt is going to make a difference in the pH. So, ammonia is NH3. NH3 is gonna react with water. Remember, a basic solution is gonna be a little different set up as far as the equilibrium is comparison to what we saw with the acid equilibrium so in this particular example we're going to have ammonia reacting with, it. with water it's going to form nh4 plus one plus oh minus and so we know the solution is basic because it's producing a hydroxide ion now the initial p8 uh, concentration of the nh3 is 0.8 we don't worry about water here and we're we're setting the ice chart up here just in case you were curious what i was doing so we set the ice chart up so this is zero zero minus x 0 0.8 minus x plus x plus x and so we need to look up the kb value for nh3 since it is a weak base so kb is 1.76 times 10 to the negative 5 and so we're going to write out the equilibrium expression 
we're going to go through the process of solving for x as we saw earlier and then we will do the same process again with the common ion in this case so kb so i'm just going to go ahead and sub, get this set up here and work through some math Okay, so we're going to solve for x, and x is going to, you're going to take 0.8, multiply by that's 1.76 to negative 5. We'll take the square root of that, so let's see what we get for x here. So I get a value to be equal to 0 0.00375. Okay, let's look at the five percent rule so we're going to take five percent of 0.8 and we get a value of 0.04 so this x is valid so look here in the ice chart x is equal to the concentration of oh minus so we can calculate the poh of a solution here poh is equal to negative log of 0 0.00375 so take the negative log of that and we end up with 1.398 just call it 1.40 for short here now the pH 14 minus 1.40 is going to give me 12.60 for the pH. So this is the initial pH of the solution. So now what we want to do is we want to answer the question as to how is the pH going to be affected by the addition of the ammonium chloride. Okay, so we just saw that the pH of the initial solution is 12.6. Now we're going to take ammonium chloride and we're going to add that into the ammonia solution. So So initially, we have 0 0.8 for NH3. This doesn't matter because water is a liquid. It's not included. NH4 plus is, was 0 to begin with. But since we are adding in 0 0.1 molar ammonium chloride, now this is 0 0.1 so it's no longer zero so the rest of it is the same plus x 0 0.1 plus x plus x and x so we go back into the expression same one we used above here and we solve for the x just like we did now the difference here is the value for NH4, it doesn't matter that water is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.8, it's going to 1.76, 10 to the negative 5. We're going to solve for x, so multiply by 0 0.8, then divide by 0 0.1. Okay, so And that gives me an x equal to 1.41 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Using the 5% rule we worked with earlier. All right, we need the value of x to be point to be smaller than 0 0.04. This is definitely smaller, so that's good. 
Now we're going to take this information. We know that X is equal to the concentration of OH minus and calculate POH. POH is equal to negative log of 1.41 times 10 to the negative 4. So take the negative, so let's, let's calculate this right fast. And we have a POH equal to 3.8. Five, one. The pH is going to be equal to 14 minus 3.851 gives me 10.149. So the initial pH of the solution was 12.6. Now after the common ion is added in, the common ion again was the ammonium because that's the conjugate acid of ammonia. So that's the common ion. So this pH was found to be 10.149. So the pH definitely decreased because of the acidic salt that was added in. And this follows, you know, the common ion effect is the main thing that we're looking at here. But it also follows Le Chatelier's principle. It follows what we talked about with salts acting as acids or bases in solution. So all this sort of ties together in these examples that we're looking at here. So in our next video, we're going to be talking about what buffers are. And we're going to see how all this stuff that we're looking at here translates into what a buffer is. And then ultimately, we'll be talking about titrations. Thanks.